guys, Shane Starnes with Droid Miter X. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Cubot Zoro. This is from Gear Best. They sent it out to me a few weeks ago for review. I've used it a little bit here and there. Uh, this is not compatible with Verizon, so I've not been able to put a SIM card in it and use it as a daily driver device. Um, but basically what this is is a lower end device. So if you have been wanting to use Android or you've been wanting to kind of dip your toes into the Android ecosystem, but you don't have $200 to put on a brand new device from your carrier like you know on the lg g3 or maybe the note 4 which is more like 300 dollars on contract uh, or maybe you were month to month and you just need a cheaper device that works decently that works well uh, this could be a device for you to consider before you purchase a device like the cubit zoro you're going to want to make sure that you check your carriers uh, band frequencies and you'll also want to make sure that you look at the description of the phone itself uh, which will be found in the link in the description of this video. Make sure that this supports your carrier's uh, frequency bands before you purchase it. You know, one thing that would really stink is if you grab this phone, uh, which is an international phone, you stuck your SIM card in there and it did not work, you'd be pretty frustrated. I mean, obviously, you could return it if you needed to. Um, but anyways, we're going to take a look at the performance of the device, the build quality of the device. Because like I said, this is more of an entry-level device. It's actually $132.99 with the coupon code that I'm going to leave for you guys in the description. Also, just so you know, I don't get any commission or anything on the coupon code. It's just there uh, for you. Otherwise, the phone's $169. So this just kind of helps you out if you decide you want to look at this device. You can use that coupon code. It'll save you a little bit of money. So the first thing that I should mention when it comes to build quality is that you kind of get what you pay for here. This is a 132 device that's unlocked, so you can use it on whichever carrier supports it. If you were to buy a device like the LG G3 or the Note 4 or something like that, and you wanted it to be unlocked, you're looking at more like $650, $700 for an unlocked high-end device like that. Uh, this one at 132 unlocked, being able to take it from carrier to carrier is a pretty awesome deal. So real quickly, we'll kind of look at what's in the box. So I did open it earlier. This actually has two SIM card slots and it shows you how to put all that together. Um, you'll have to insert the battery in your own SIM card. There's a quick start guide there. The battery and stuff comes in here. There's actually a case that comes with it, which is a pretty nice uh, little addition there. Okay, in this box, there is an international uh, charging brick, which we're not gonna be able to use in the United States. And then you have, in this box, a USB charge cable. So this can easily plug into uh, your laptop. It can plug into any other uh, USB wall brick that you have laying around you'll be able to use with this. So we'll just kind of set the box out of the way and take a look at the phone itself. Okay, so the first thing that we will look at here is the build quality. So it feels like a pretty solid device. It has a little bit of heft or bulk to it. It's about as heavy as like an LG G3. So it does feel pretty solid, but it has this plasticky back uh, on the back, and it feels like plastic. So that kind of gives it a little cheaper of a feel. And then if you take the back off uh, to put in the battery or to put in your SIM card, then you can really see the cheapness of the build. So just kind of take off the back, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. You have just a super flimsy plastic back here that just serves as a cover for uh, the back of the device here. And then you'll also notice... Uh, something that you'll see a lot of times in the lower end devices is you'll see these cheaper buttons here on the side which are just covered up by the back of the phone here. But other than the cheap plasticky back, the front of the device actually feels pretty high quality. The glass here feels super sturdy. I'm not sure what type of glass this is because it doesn't say in the phone's description. I don't know if it's Gorilla Glass or a cheaper glass. I'm sure they probably went with Gorilla Glass just to make it endure a little better. As far as the performance and the software on the device, we'll go ahead into our settings and we'll go to about phone. It is running Android 4.4.4 KitKat, so it's running the same software that 90% or more of other Android smartphones are running right now. This is an AOSP uh, ROM itself. It's not got any skinning or any extra bloatware on the ROM, which is nice. And then the actual performance of the ROM, it seems to perform pretty well for what it is. Now I did notice when I was scrolling through websites that sometimes it would get a little slow and it seemed a little buggy and sometimes it, you know the websites would even crash. Uh, but if you're browsing, say we're just browsing the XDA forum 
which is what I was doing when I first got the device and noticed a little bit of lag here and there. Um, and it, it comes later on as you use the device itself. It seems like after you've used it for a while, it tends to slow down and become just a little buggy. Now the processor it's running here is the Qualcomm MSM8916 that's clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. That is a quad core processor and it is by Qualcomm. Qualcomm we know makes very good processors. Uh, so it should, really it should run pretty quickly. Uh, the only downfall might just be that one gigabyte of RAM. So you'll notice going from screen to screen, everything seems to be running pretty smoothly. One thing that I don't like that just kind of screams older, cheaper device is the capacitive buttons. A lot of the newer devices have on-screen buttons. Then again, uh, devices like the Galaxy S5 and the Galaxy Note 4 do have capacitive buttons. These just kind of look a little older and a little cheaper here, if you can see them there. I'm not a big fan, but they do serve their purpose. Okay, and real quickly, we'll go ahead and run a quadrant benchmark on the device. So other specs here, it does come with a 5-inch display, 720p display. So the display actually looks pretty good. I don't really have any qualms about the display. It's not 1080, but it looks good. It's nice and bright. The colors are nice and sharp and clear. It doesn't look like a cheap IPS display. The front-facing camera is a 5-megapixel camera, and the rear-facing camera is a 13-megapixel camera. Uh, you should be able to get some solid pictures out of those cameras and really then again you know it is there again it is a $135 device so you know we're not asking for the latest bells and whistles on such a device okay and the score on quadrants not bad it's 11,000 uh, devices like the LG G3 get more like 23,000 but that processor is clocked at 2.5 gigahertz and it is, uh, has a lot more RAM. Although devices like the Nexus 6 are only getting about 14,000 on Quadrant Benchmark. So really 11,000 on this phone is not that bad. So all in all, my experience with this phone, being that it is a device that only will set you back $135, has been a pretty good experience. Uh, anyone looking to buy an entry level device, uh, this could be a device worth looking at. Definitely uh, head over to GearBest.com, check out their list of devices. They have several other devices that this one doesn't fit your style uh, or if it doesn't suit your needs you could probably find something over there. Anyways guys that about wraps it up for this video. If you like it be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. You can find more of me at droidmoderx.com. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.